name is Abby. Hello, my name is Abby, and welcome to this presentation all about Proloquo to Go. Now, Proloquo to Go is a communication app that can be used with learners who may be nonverbal or may have limited verbal communication. Proloquo to Go can be used on an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod Touch. This enables it to be really quite portable if um, the learner was wanting to use it out in the community. It's something that could just get put in their pocket um, and be on their phone. This could be also helpful for maybe an older student. It may be seen as being more socially acceptable to just get out your phone and use um, the communication app on it rather than a big and bulky communication device. Okay, so some of the features of Proloquo to Go. So Proloquo to Go has a vocabulary of over 7,000 items. That is a lot. And you can also add even more yourself. It has a choice of a list or a grid view, which we'll talk about more shortly. It has text to speech. Now this is a really fantastic function. Uh, so say you're wanting um, to be working with a student in the classroom, you had another student on the other side of the room that used Proloquo to go to communicate, that other student could then come along here and that they could say, I okay. am finished. I am finished. And they could say that from the other side of the room and you'd be able to hear what they're wanting to communicate with you. And then you could respond like, oh yep, I'll be there shortly or I'll be there. Um, you know, in a few minutes or whatever the response is that you're going to be providing. If they're using a um, communication device that doesn't have that text to speech, then you may not have heard what they're trying to communicate with you. Now, the Proloquo to Go app has an extensive customization um, options. So you can change buttons, you can move them, you can add new ones in. Um, there's lots of flexibility with the app. Saying that though, we would suggest keeping it fairly familiar, um, having symbols and buttons and folders in the same spot. So as the student gets to know it, they know where to go and what the sequence is to find particular things. There's also quick access to recently spoken items. So maybe there's some key phrases that the student regularly uh, uses, they can go and access them. And like I said before, if it's being used on an iPod or an iPhone, it's very portable. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the different views. So at the moment, I've opened up the app. So let me just go out of it. Proloquo to Go is the app with the hour on it. So I'm going to select that one. And at the moment, I have a grid view set up. So it's got all of the buttons and the folders on here. If I select a particular button, I. it goes up to the top in the view there. So I'm going to say I like. like. Now I'm going to choose a place. If you have a look down the bottom there, the um, different icons are folders. They have a little tab at the top which indicates it is a folder. So I'm going to select places and it actually goes into that folder. Okay, So it goes into another area where it has more options. I'm going to say I like playground. the playground. Okay, If I select up the top here, so I press near where it says I like playground or on any of those, I like playground. it reads out the full sentence. Okay, We'd really encourage students to be learning to be um, not only using keywords, but then combining words together to make sentences. So rather than saying playground and me not knowing, are they wanting to go to the playground? Are they wanting to talk about something they did at the playground? Are they wanting to share that they like the playground or um, many other options? Okay, if their students are learning to be putting these things into sentences, we can get a clearer picture of what they're wanting to communicate. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at creating a new user. So what I'm going to do is select down the bottom, there is a toggle settings button. I'm going to select that one. At the moment, I've got um, the Abby user selected. I'm going to create a new user. So add user, and I'm going to call this user Joe. Okay, so I'm going to use the Australian English. 
and then I can choose a different voice depending on who the learner is. So there's adult voices, there's children voices and there's different um, options that you can download. Now I'm going to choose Liam because this is for a, a young uh, student. Hello, I'm Liam, one of the childless. Okay, I'm going to choose the vocabulary that's there already. I can choose the vocabulary level. There's basic, intermediate and advanced. I'm going to go with intermediate. Then I can choose orientation depending on if I want to rotate the page. I can choose what way I want the device set up. I'm going to go with landscape. Now I can select a grid size. So you can have a huge range of buttons that are um, displayed on the screen. So we've got 77 at the moment. You can even increase that even more. Okay, and we're going to reduce that down to 32 because that's how many I know Joe has on his page at a time. So I've got the 32 buttons there. If you do want, you can reduce that down even more. Okay, so we've got 32, I'm gonna click next. Now you can import preferences. So say Joe had an existing profile set up already, he had photos on there, specific things, then I can actually import that too. And it says, welcome Joe. All right, and here it is. And I'm now using Joe's profile. You can easily swap between profiles. So if you had different students using the same iPad, you can swap in between their profiles. Okay, so this is a generic um, setup now. Now I might want to add in some more buttons. So say for instance, I go into activities at the moment, there's only a sample activities folder. Okay, I'm wanting to add in some more activity options. So if I click down the bottom, there is a pencil. If I select that one, that is how we can edit, add buttons, change buttons, all right? So if you click on the pencil, that's what you're gonna be able to do. I wanna create a new button. And I'm gonna call this one Bubbles. Now, as you can see, as I start writing Bubbles, it comes up with some pictures. I don't want Bubbles the fish. So I'm going to select the bubbles that I want. Okay, you can see that my button's appearing there and then I can select done. Okay, and as quickly as that, bubbles, I have a new button. Okay, now say this time I'm wanting to use a photo to create a button. I might be wanting to add in a particular person so I can add in a picture of myself, for instance. I'm going to add in my picture under people and under teachers. I could create a new button, or in this case, I'm going to edit an existing button. So I'm going to select the pencil, and I'm going to select the picture of the teacher, and I'm going to change that to Abby. Now, I wanna make this as meaningful as possible, so I'm actually gonna put my photo in there. So I'm gonna select where it says Abby and it has the picture, and I can delete that picture, choose a symbol, choose a picture, or take a picture. I'm going to take a picture. Okay, here's my picture. All right, use photo. And then you can see that that photo is there now. I'm gonna select done. Okay, and then straight away, that app picture can be accessed. Abby. Okay, so if Joe is wanting to talk about me or request my attention, um, he can come in under teachers. Abby. And he's got mine there already. All right, so that's some information about how to create new buttons. Now, I'd like to have a quick um, uh, section on guided access and uh, communication devices. So if you are working with a student who has a communication app on an iPad, the suggestion really is that they have two devices. One for games and educational activities, and then one with their communication device on it. That way there isn't this pull between using it as a communication device and using it for something that's more leisure based. So um, having two devices means that you can then have one that's specific for communication. That is that student's voice. And with that, so that the student isn't trying to access other things on that iPad and it's just used for communication, you can set up something called guided access. And that means the student can't exit out of the app, that it is locked on that app and so they're only using it for that. 
Okay, so then to turn guided access on, go into the app that you'd like it to be on. So I'm going to go into Proloquo to go, and then I'm going to triple click the home button. One, two, three, and it says guide, guided access has started. Okay, so now when the student tries to press the home button, which would usually mean they exit out of the app, it says, you can see up the top there, it says guided access is enabled. Triple click the home button to exit. So it means that they can only access this particular app on there. Now, if you're wanting to disable it, triple click the home button, one, two, three, and it says enter your passcode, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then there's some options. So you can end it, you can resume it. As you can see down the bottom, I've selected particular areas that I don't want the student to be able to interact with either. So say I'm not wanting them to edit um, buttons or change the settings within Quo to go. That can be turned on and off as well. So I have dragged across areas. So it says click on areas that you would like to disable. So I have dragged over and disabled a particular area. That's also an option, okay? So I'm going to end guided access. It then means when I click off of Proloquo to go, I can actually exit out of the app. All right, so that is our information about the Proloquo to go communication app, how it can be used by students, and then also information about guided access, which we can be used on a variety of different apps. Thank you very much for listening.